Terrace House is a part of an amazing history on the outskirts of Melbourne, but while they're beautiful, they're not exactly ideal for modern living. Well, so true, Joe. Now, you know I love my yep. music. They remind me a little bit of the old Bruce Springsteen album, Darkness on the Edge of Town. They can be a little bit dark and gloomy. Yeah. But not this one. The reno here has changed it all. You betcha. Now, Joe, we won't be dancing in the dark. <laughs> We're going to be blinded by the light. Two more Springsteen tracks. Wow. We love it. <laughs> I actually do. So heading inside, and Pete, they've kept the original room at the front. They've just restored it beautifully. Yeah. Now, in any alteration addition, the first thing we need to do is assess the state of the existing structure. What to keep and what to knock away. If in doubt, knock it out. It'll be cheaper in the long run. And from this arch forward, it's a brave new world. Although this is a design with a twist. Any usual terrace on the ground floor would be walking down a hallway, maybe into a kitchen, a living room, some lean-tos out the back. Instead, we have passed that office out the front, a guest bedroom, a bathroom, a hidden toilet under the stairs, into this, the main feature, a huge master bedroom with another ensuite. So literally, they've flipped the traditional terrace plan on its head. Which means the really exciting stuff is upstairs. Pete, I love this very funky carpet on the stair runner, and it's here where you really get a great appreciation of the old and the new design. It's always the trick, isn't it? Yeah. Meshing contemporary design with the existing, and this stair runner you mentioned actually is the same width of the new perforated steel stair above, which is getting light already down into this traditional level. Very clever. Oh, Pete, it doesn't matter which way I look, I love it all. Joe, this is one of the most extraordinary transformations yep. of a terrace we've ever seen. You can think, once upon a time, this was plagued by being dark, damp and cool. Now it's dry, warm and absolutely full of light. It certainly is, and so much detail on the ceiling, Pete. One of the big, brave concepts was using concrete, and here it's actually celebrated for a number of reasons. If you've got a lot of direct light hitting a surface, it'll show up imperfections, but why not celebrate it? And here they've separated the barge boards in the formwork, actually expressing all those little screed lines, so it's almost sculptural. This amazing American oak chevron pattern floor. I mean, there's so much detail and so much amazing craftsmanship in mm. this. This first level, kitchen, dining and living, and it's also the manipulation of scale. I can't wait to explore. Well, you go that way and I'll head this way and we can actually show you. <laughs> You've got to remember, this site is only five metres wide, but what it lacks in width, it makes up in height. And that's where the architects have had some fun with the vertical scale. That allowed them to bring the ceiling down over the dining room, creating an NFC and then dropping us down into this sunken living area. This new angled wall using Flemish bond brickwork, using recycled bricks, which picks up on the gritty nature of the surrounding architecture. But you'll note there's no downlights, which would otherwise sap the mood of this naturally lit space. All the lighting is either concealed behind those trims or these beautiful feature pieces. The other thing too is from here, we go directly out onto the open terrace which, remember, is on the first floor, up out of the shadows. Into the hungry heart of the home, the statement kitchen. Now, this is actually in the centre of the home's design. It would usually be quite a dark part of the home. Here, it is the opposite, because of this incredible sweeping light chimney and those high set windows. On this side, you have the wall set back from the boundary, and because of the depth of the wall, it does allow you to have a little window seat and these nooks where you can place all your bits and pieces. But what really adds to the drama here is this monochromatic colour scheme. So on this side, the white Korean bench top, and then here, this dramatic black Zimbabwe leather finished on the island bench. Now, these little divots on the top, not only does it give another surface that the light plays with, but it's incredibly tactile as it's well. It's very exotic, isn't it? Yeah. And it complements beautifully this marble on this side of the kitchen. Yeah. I noticed, Joe, in this open plan kitchen, dining and sitting area, no television. Oh, yeah. Instead, that's concealed in the more traditional front part of the home.
Some more precise workmanship here, Pete, with this fantastic steel balustrade and stairwell. It was actually bought in two pieces and then welded on site. You mentioned the perforated steel treads allow light to get in below, but the architects have resisted the urge to actually butt this up solidly against the wall, which gives the effect that it's actually floating. Mm. And it leads us to what I think is the signature shot of yeah. the entire design. Now, you've got to remember, if you're using a monochromatic palette, black, white and grey, no colour. Emphasis goes back on the form. Yeah. And here we have the geometry of the beautiful curving concrete offset with this angled steel. Now it's about sculpture. And it leads to another really amazing space, this outdoor entertainment area and viewing deck with great views right around the cityscape. Mm. But Pete, it's got its own outdoor kitchen, a fantastic hatch door that opens by remote. And normally we would take you out there, but to be over the teeming. pouring with rain. <laughs> Well, I'm more than happy to stay under this beautiful concrete umbrella. Me too.